Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to work on algebraic expressions. Don't let the word algebraic bother you. You have already worked with algebra a little bit so far this semester anyhow. You already know how to say, look at an equation that says 3 times x equals 30 and divide both sides of the equation by 3 to figure out that x is 10. You know how to solve something like x squared equals 25 by taking the square root of both sides and finding out that x is equal to 5. But everything that we've done so far has only involved one step. Algebra is a powerful tool for solving problems, but in order to use it well, we have to know some background. All right, so let's start off and see what algebraic expressions are all about. And let's begin with some vocabulary. You already know what a variable is. We have looked at that before. A variable is a letter that is used to represent an unknown value. An algebraic expression is a logical arrangement of values variables and operations All right, that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So here's what we mean. Let's take something like 3x plus 5. This is an example of an algebraic expression. It tells us we're going to take x, whatever it happens to be, multiply that value by 3, and then add 5 to the result. And we understand this. Something like 7 minus divided by x square root. Well, that's just garbage, not an algebraic expression. It's just slop. OK. We have also seen the word evaluate before. Evaluate means find a value for. We have evaluated formulas already, and evaluating algebraic expressions works exactly the same way. Let me slide this up a little bit. The only difference is that sometimes our results might come out to be negative or the inputs for the variables, the values for the variables, might be negative also. So let's try this one. We have 7 times x times y plus 3y squared minus an x. x is negative 2, y is worth negative 5. Where the x is, leave a big gaping hole with parentheses, put in the value of negative 2. Do the same thing for the y. This helps us to see the multiplication so we don't misread the negative sign as a subtraction sign. Plus 3, y comes out, negative 5 goes in, in parentheses, minus the negative 2. All right, order of operations always holds. So as we look at this, what should we do first? There are a lot of parentheses visible but none of them actually contain any operation. It's just being used so that we can see the multiplications that are going on. Parentheses are done. Parentheses then exponents. We have one of those. Negative 5 squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. 
and bring everything else down. All right, next thing we're doing is looking for multiplications and divisions. I don't have any divisions, but there are a lot of multiplications. Let's take care of them all at once. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Negative 14 times negative 5 is positive 70. 3 times 25 is 75. And then we have minus the negative 2. It's probably easier if we, write, if we rewrite this minus the negative 2 in a simpler fashion. And we know that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So there we go. 70 plus 75 plus another 2 should give us 147. Let's check that out on the calculator. We have 7 times negative 2 times negative 5 plus 3 times negative 5. That negative 5 is being squared, so we use the square key, minus the negative 2. And you'll notice that I'm typing this in exactly the way it's written on the paper. Calculator says, oh good, 147. Same thing we got before. And so that's it. It works exactly the same way as it did when you were evaluating formulas. Let's get a few more pieces of vocabulary. A term or terms are the parts of an expression being added or subtracted. Don't worry if this doesn't make complete sense just yet. Let's get the vocabulary down, and then we will go look at an example, and I promise it will become much clearer after that. A variable term is a term that contains a variable. And a constant term is a term that does not contain a variable. And finally, we look at the coefficient. A coefficient is the numerical factor of a variable term. All right, let's start with the word coefficient. The numerical factor of a variable term. And a factor is something that's being multiplied. So if my term was 3x, I would have a coefficient of 3. That's the number that's being multiplied by the variable. If my term was y, we would know that that meant 1y, and the coefficient would be 1, the number that is being multiplied by the variable. All right, on to the next page. So here we have two expressions. I'll do one with you, and then we'll leave the second one for you to try. We want to identify the terms of the expression, figure out the type of each term, and whether or not it has a coefficient. So terms are the parts of the expression that are being added or subtracted. The first piece that I see is 7x squared. The coefficient is the number that's being multiplied by the variable portion. So this coefficient is 7 because this is 7 times x squared. Since there's a variable in this term, this is a variable term. The next piece I see 
is the 3x, but the 3x is being subtracted. And the sign comes along with the term. So this term is minus 3x. Let's write that down. The sign is part of the term. All right, so when we're subtracting 3x, the term is negative 3x. The coefficient, the number that's being multiplied by the variable, in this case, it's negative 3. And since there's a variable, this is a variable term. The next piece is a. We know that this really means 1a, so the coefficient is 1, and it also is a variable term. And last we have this 26, but the 26 is being subtracted, so don't forget the sign. There is no coefficient because nothing is being multiplied by a variable. This is a constant term. And constant terms do not have coefficients. All right, so you pause the recording, try part B, and come back when you are ready. Let's see what you have. The terms should be 38, negative x, negative 8b, ab, and 9y. The coefficient of 38 does not exist. Constants do not have coefficients. The coefficient on negative x is negative 1. The coefficient on negative 8ab is negative 8. And the coefficient on 9y is 9. 38 is a constant term, and all the rest are variable terms. Not so bad, huh? All right. Like terms are terms with the same variable portion. And it has to be exactly the same, not just sort of the same. So for example, um, 7c and 5c are like terms. 7x squared and 5x are not like terms. The variable portions have to be identical. Let's scroll up a little bit here. The next thing we want to worry about is how to combine like terms. To combine like terms, we combine the coefficients and keep the variable portion the same. By combine, what we really mean is add or subtract. It just depends upon whatever is happening at the time. Let's come back up here at these like terms here. And suppose C stood for cookies. If you had seven cookies and then five more cookies, we would add them together and end up with 12 cookies. So you just put the constants together and keep the variable portion the same. Algebra is just a nice way to write things in a shorthand sometimes. OK, so let's try this first one. Negative 5x plus 7x. Officially, it looks like this. Combine the constants, negative 5 plus 7, keep the variable portion the same. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2, 
x. For letter b, when we look at 3x squared minus 7x, are these like terms? No. The variable portions are not identical. Over here I have x squared and over here I have x. These can't be put together. And so we just leave it alone. For letter C, we have 8y minus 10. Are these like terms? No. One is a variable term, one is a constant term. Nothing I can do, leave them alone. How about for letter D? Negative 4a plus a. Are those like terms? The variable portions are identical, they are like terms. And so we have negative 4, the first coefficient, plus 1, which is the second coefficient. So even though we don't see it, it's still there. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3a. Okay, so pause the recording, try the next two yourself, and then come back. All right, let's see what you've got. For letter E, we would like to look at 8y minus 10y. 8 minus 10, y. 8 minus 10 is negative 2, and the y comes along. If you're able to look at this and do it in your head, that's perfectly fine. If you said to yourself, 8 minus 10 is negative 2, and then plop down the y, that's perfect. Don't worry if you have not used this middle step. For letter F, 7x minus 5a. Not like terms. The variable portions, as a matter of fact, are completely different, and there's nothing we can do here. On to the next page. So our job here is to simplify the expression by combining like terms. Wow, and there's a lot of terms here. So we're going to have to look carefully. Let's see. Let's start on the left. Do I have any x terms? There's one. And way down here at the other end, there's another. So if we separate those, we have x plus 2x. And of course, that gives us 1x plus 2x give us 3x's. How about some y terms? We have 7y, and here's another one, 3y's. Seven y plus three y. Seven plus three is ten. Seven y's plus three y's is ten y's. And then we look at the constants. And it happens that we have two of those. A negative twelve and a negative fourteen. Putting those together, the negatives plus more negatives. The answer is going to be negative. A lot of negatives in that bowl. This would be a negative 26. So in the end, this whole expression turns out to be 3x plus 10y minus 26. Okay, so pause the recording and give the second one a try on your own. All right, let's see what we have. Start with the w terms. 3w plus 2w gives me 5w. And then the w squared terms. 8w squared minus 7w squared gives me 1w squared. You can write the 1 in or leave it off. And then finally, the constant term. And there's only one, so it just comes along as a minus 4. If you did all of the work on the side, that's great. If you were able to do it in your head, that's fine too. The work on the side would look something like this. There. Okay. Moving right along, the next thing we want to learn about is the distributive property. And we use the distributive property a lot. 
The distributive property says that multiplication distributes over addition and subtraction. And what this really means is that if you have some parentheses holding an addition together, say c plus d, and this sum is being multiplied by something, perhaps b, that the everything inside the parentheses is being multiplied by the b. So we have b times c and b times d. And the same thing holds true for subtraction. b times c minus d in parentheses, that entire difference is being multiplied by b. b minus c minus b times d. And what we usually do, just to help keep ourselves straight, is to use some arrows or some curves here to help us remember what's being multiplied. Right, the b gets distributed past or over passed out, sorry, passed around, b applies to c, b applies to d, and this is a multiplication. All right, let's try a couple. Here's our first one. Distributive property, everything in parentheses is being multiplied by five. So we have five times the first piece, which is three x, minus 5 times the second piece, which is 4. 5 times 3x is 15x, minus, and 5 times 4 is 20. And it works just like that. Some people like to write this middle step. Other people can just do this in their head with a couple of arcs. 5 times 3x is 15x, minus, and then 5 times 4 is 20. Let's try again. Now the thing that we're multiplying by is a negative 3. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21 minus negative 3 times 2y is a negative 6y. And then we clean that up a little bit because we know that subtracting a negative is exactly the same as adding a positive. So we have minus 21 plus 6y. There we go. What some people do is see the minus here, the negative sign by the 3, and the negative sign in front of the 2, and just put those together automatically. Negative 3 times negative 2y would give us a positive 6y. All right, your job, try the next couple on your own, and then come back to the recording when you are done. I need to scroll up a little bit. Okay, so let's see. Eight times four a is thirty two a. Eight times b is plus eight b. And that's all there is to it. Now, here for letter d, we don't really have a number in front of the parentheses, but there is a minus sign, and this means that there's a minus 1 out there, just like for variables. If you don't see a number in front of something, there's always a 1 there. Negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3. Negative 1 times 2x, minus 2x. And there we go. Okay, on to the next page. In all of our math classes, we are often asked to simplify, and the direction simplify has a different meaning depending upon what level of math we are doing. For us, the word simplify is going to mean apply the distributive property and combine like terms. All right, so here we go. Simplifying the expressions. Inside of the parentheses, there's nothing that we can do. 5a 
and negative 6b are not like terms. So then we move on to the distributive property. Negative 4 times 5a is negative 20a. And negative 4 times the negative 6b is positive 24b. The rest of these terms are not involved in this distributive property because it's not next to the parentheses. We'll just bring them down. All right, distributive property is done. Time to combine some like terms. I have some a terms, negative 20a minus 28a. It's okay to come use your calculator if you like. The job is to put the coefficients together. Negative 20 plus negative 28 is negative 48. So we have negative 48 a's. And then we look at the b terms. 24b plus 14b gives us 38 b's. And that's the way it works. Let's try one more and then you can do the last one on your own. Here we have 8 next to a sum in parentheses, 8 times 3w plus 5z minus and then another distributive property, 2 times z minus 4w. This is one of those occasions where being able to write a subtraction as adding the opposite comes in pretty handy. The first part of this stays the same, 8 times 3w plus 5z. But then this subtraction, where we say minus 2 here, let's add a negative 2. So this piece gets rewritten times z minus 4w. All right. Distributive property. 8 times 3w is 24w's. 8 times 5z, well, 8 times 5 is 40. So now we have 40z's. The purpose of rewriting the next piece is adding a negative is so that we don't forget to multiply the negative 2 by everything instead of just 2. So negative 2 times z is negative 2z or minus 2z. Negative 2 times negative 4w gives us a positive 8w. All right, time to combine some like terms. Let's start with the w's. 24w plus 8w gives me 32w's. And then the z terms, 40z minus 2z gives me 38z's. Okay, your turn. Try the next one. Be careful here with this minus sign. Write it as plus a negative and put that negative one in there. It'll help. Come back to the recording when you're ready. All right. Let's see what we have. Let's start by rewriting this. Negative 5 times 7x plus 4 plus a negative 1 times 3x minus 10. Right, there was already a 1 here before that we didn't see. And then it helped to take this portion and rewrite it. That'll help us with our distributing. All right. So negative 5 times 7 is negative 35, negative 5 times 7x is negative 35x. Negative 5 times 4 would give us negative 20. Negative 1 times 3x will give us a negative 3x. Negative 1 times a negative 10 gives us a positive 10. Time to combine like terms. Let's start with the x's. Negative 35x and negative 3x 
gives us negative 38x. And then the constants, a negative 20, a positive 10, that will give us a negative 10. If you didn't get this negative 38, well, that's OK. Let's come over here and double check it. But all we have to do is say negative 35 minus 3. Right? Just combine those constants, and there we are, the negative 38. OK, I hope that went well for you. Good luck with your homework, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.